blah, blah, blah. One bus driver has uh, eight or nine supervisors. I mean, of course, you know, you extrapolate that throughout the system. Oh, but we supervise more than just you. There's other people. Well, yeah. Actually, they've never needed to supervise me except for my off-the-job behavior. You know, and then the bogus ADA stuff, that ADA nonsense. That's that was a lie. It was, was made-up fabrication. Uh, you know, it's uh, part of this unethical management. So, Max Facts blog, one of the best blogs out here. Actually. Uh, Crazy. I gotta get out. Everybody's in a rush. Everybody's in a rush. Oh, where's he going? He's going off the highway. I don't know, man. Max Facts blog got an excellent post about that budget tool and, and the numerous, numerous, numerous things wrong with it. That, uh, basically, you know, your choices are limited to what they give you for choices. You don't have, whoa. And some of us are backing on down again here. Those of us in the know, know. Oh. And she did a lot of, uh, he did a lot of, uh, whoever that person was, I'm not sure. But uh, that person, did a lot of analysis of like travel expenses and marketing expenses. The marketing department that doesn't, uh, whoa, now he's pulling over. That guy was just in a rush. The uh, marketing department, which apparently had hired ID branding to do all of its branding, but it's, it's appeared that uh, ID branding has gone out of business. Now, isn't that interesting? I wonder how much that contract was for before they went belly up. You know, that's interesting that that would happen, isn't it? Because uh, that happened with the West. Now, let's talk about some of the other things that have gone on here. Like that West bailout. Remember that? It was, I think it was, what, $10 million. An extra $10 million was handed over to the West. Well, you know, that came through that. It was handed over to the West. Uh, because after they had gone bankrupt, you know. Uh, well, here's the, here's the, here's the, set, the ten million dollars you need. I mean, just stolen from operations budget, I imagine. Just handed on over, to, including the uh, director of that West. Colorado Rail Carrier is thirty thousand dollar a month salary. Now that's that's what amazes me is that the guy that led the company into bankruptcy still drew his thirty thousand a month after the bankruptcy. That's just amazing. That just goes to show you the kind of incredible bullshit that goes on here. I mean, they just handed that money over. They didn't ask anybody. It didn't go through the board. It was a secret deal and it was exposed, just like a million other things here. And what about that fuel con fuel futures contract? Remember that? How many millions did they lose on that? We're not sure. We can't get really information about that, but they paid way above market for that fuel for two years. And they, they used millions of gallons of gas in this company, and so they lost millions on that. Nobody pays the price for any of this. All the executives that were in charge of these projects never, there was never any price to pay that they had to pay. They never had one firing over any of this mismanagement. But you know, an operator yells at somebody and they're fired. You see how it, this double standard is so pronounced here. They, it's just like everything else in the country though. I mean, the technocrats in the government, they are not accountable. It's only the people at the bottom that are accountable. We're the ones that are accountable. Nobody else is. I think there's a good case to be made for uh, mismanagement and competence. I mean, they had, 
a 300% increase in their in their revenue in 10 years. That's 300% more to play with. But they keep telling us there's a bunch of problems. See, they're, you know, I'm not going to go over this over and over and over, but those of us that understand the situation here are very, very frustrated that uh, we have to listen to this. But, you know, what, what am I surprised? We listen to the, them talking about Iraq, and they're completely lying about that. We, we listen to them talking about the economy, and they're completely lying about that. And 2012 is my bet for when the, the Greek, I call it the Greece syndrome, starts coming this way. That, man, that means, uh, you know, they're going to start choking us like they're choking the workers in Greece. Of course, Greece had a much more favorable system for workers than we do. I mean, they were retiring at 55 and with full pensions. And, 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 I mean, they had a, a huge civil service. Thing. At least here, we still do have some free market, although the only growth industry is government now. There is no other growth industry. I guess. I mean, I know oil is doing better than ever. But that's all offshore stuff. I mean, all of the stuff that's making money is making money for the people that don't live in America. But you see all these people still driving on the roads here. You know, and they're all shopping at the malls. And, I mean, you don't notice anything really uh, different in the country. I mean, uh, things aren't bad yet. You know, I'm paying more for my health. I'm paying 330 a month out of my check, and I'm a part-timer. And the full-timers will say to you, well, that was your decision for not going full-time. So you shouldn't have, you, you made that decision. And I suppose there's some truth to that, but uh, I cared about my life. <laughs> I, wanna, I would never have made it here, I, I understand. In the, in the words of the famous Clint Eastwood, a man must know his limitations. And I knew after going through the line training here, there had been no possibility of me surviving full time as an operator. I'd already done this job in two other venues, and uh, there was no way you were going to get me to do 10, 11 hours a day, five days a week. It just wasn't going to happen. I, I, would, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. But you see, nobody was expecting me included that TriMet was going to change their deal. And Jason McHuff, who knows a lot of stuff, people should never underestimate Jason McHuff for his knowledge of issues, has brought up the point that why isn't TriMet shopping around more effectively for other types of health insurance? There should be like providence. I want some say in who I have for doctors. I, I have my doctor I've had for years, and, and I, I want to keep that guy. I'm not going to just go to an HMO and take whoever they assign me to. I, I'm not interested in that. All of my doctors are in my neighborhood, and they, I don't have to drive off to somewhere to see them. It's just so easy that I'm not going to do that. There's got to be other options besides the Blue Cross way to pay him. There's got to be more options, and see, Jason McCuff brings up that point. Why isn't TriMet management doing more research about options on healthcare rather than just shoving the cost down our throat? And that's a very good question. Why aren't they? Why aren't other agencies across the country doing that? Why aren't they forming alternative uh, methods of insurance? Well, you know, I think that's obvious because just in the same reason TriMet has a lot of money in Goldman Sachs, people forgot that. I'm going to have to dig that out. The Goldman Sachs connection, you know, the evil Goldman Sachs. We all know about Goldman Sachs and how they uh, how they how they've created a lot of the problems that are going on now. Why a lot of the people got unemployed. It's all started with the banks, you know. They're the ones that precipitated all this crisis. And uh, the same reason that they invest in Goldman Sachs is why they don't buck the insurance industry because the insurance industry is powerful and their lobbying efforts prevents, just like they wouldn't discuss the single payer or the government sponsored health care in America during the, the so-called when they were, you know, the Obamacare is what they ended up getting 
and there's a lot of people that have a lot of problem with that, me included. Uh, but they wouldn't discuss single payer. Why not? Because the insurance industry's lobby is too powerful. It's, it's empty over here. Wow. 67 has been running pretty pretty well the last couple of days. In the morning, it was bad. My first couple of shifts, it was bad. Cleared up by seven. And look who's there, our friend Steve Morgan. I see you, Steve. I see him there. That's our buddy Steve Morgan there. He's, he's probably still angry at me. Remember Steve Morgan? I did a couple of videos about him. Anyway, we used to be friends until uh, an incident. I'm not sure. Last time I ran into him, he was all right with me. I'm not sure if he's still... But he, he holds Jason McCuff guilty. I mean, come on. Man. That's just not fair. I mean, Jason, he's the one you shouldn't be holding guilty. I'm the one that's guilty. But it was all harmless. It was harmless. you got to look at the... You know... Oh, here comes the ambulance. Uh, somebody's having a very bad Christmas. Every time I see an ambulance, I just think somebody is not having a good day. Not only they're not having a good day, but they're having a fuck day. I don't remember what I was talking about, but there's my friend over there. But she's going somewhere before she goes. To the, that's a 67 rider, very nice woman. I forgot her name, but I've known her for a long time. She works at one of the call centers over here. It's always been one of my favorite people on the, on the 67. You know, a lot of the regular riders, riders that you get all the time, you know, get, you get to know, they're just so uh, fantastic people. And they understand, they see the ones that ride all the time understand the value of getting your bus driver to like you. It's it's, uh, it's a good thing to do. And why? Because, you know, when you're not at that stop and we see you, if you're if you're like a pal of ours, we're gonna stop. You know what I mean? If we don't like you, if you've been like a miserable fuck, we're not gonna stop. I mean it's just that simple. It's, you know, the bus driver is one person that actually does affect your life. Even though we're not respected in the culture, people that understand what we do understand that don't be abusing us for no reason because actually we do affect your life. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things we can do for you as a bus driver that you'd appreciate. There's no point in being mean to us for no reason. The one, and the ones that really understand are nice. They, they know that one of these days they might not be at the stop. And yeah, you're damn right I'm going to stop for them if I see them. I do it all the time for the people that I know. I used to be able to use my cell phone and have them wait for me. I would wait. I used to have my cell phone on back in the day. And, I, and these people out here would have my number. And it's like they were late to the stop. If the cell phone went off, it would, it would vibrate. I would stop at whatever stop I was at and and wait and look around and make sure that they were not the ones calling. I didn't look at the cell phone, but I did feel it. And the code was, if you call me when the bus is right at the stop and you're not right at the stop, but you're like, can get to the stop within 30 seconds, then you just have to ring me and I'll, and I'll actually pull over. And I used to do that all the time. That was a, a common thing. And before Transit Tracker, I used to have people contact me in route about how late I was because there was a route where I was so late and it was the middle of the winter and people didn't want to freeze so they would call up and I would give them the, the live report 